Using SwiftUI, you can make and receive calls with the phone app on iPhone and iPad. After watching this video, you will be able to use SwiftUI to ring your phone or iPad by displaying the incoming call screen you see in this video. In this example, we have an incoming call screen from a SwiftUI app displaying in the dynamic island. It supports haptic by default. To feel the haptic feedback, I will place the phone on my table. I can tap on the call in the dynamic island to enter full screen mode. Here we can perform some call operations such as declining the call, accepting the call or setting a reminder. Let's set a reminder, for example, in an hour. The call is now declined. By setting a reminder, the information will be stored in the reminder app. So let's launch that. You can see here under the morning category, we have information about the reminder. So once you set the reminder, the information will be stored in the reminder app. I will go back to Xcode and run the app again. I will tap the app from the dynamic island to enter full screen. Instead of setting a reminder, let's decline the call. You can see the information here. The audio has been declined. If we now go to the phone app, you can see we have the information there. Over here, it is shown in the phone recents under missed and all calls. You can, for example, delete it and run the app again. Now we don't have any recent call. So I will go to Xcode and run the app again. Instead of going to full screen, we can decline it here. If I launch the phone app again, you can see the information is there. Basically, this is what we will build in this video. I have already created a Swift UI project for this. We are going to use it to present the incoming call you just saw. The underlying technology is using CallKit. CallKit is a framework from Apple. We can use it to make VoIP calls. So for example, we can use it to present an incoming call or an outgoing call. In this video, we will focus only on receiving an incoming call. I will make another video for an outgoing call. Then in the third video, we will customize the calling experience. To test the app on your phone, I have made the source code available on GitHub. On just.github.com slash emosjoinfi, you will find incoming call swiftui.swift. I have also created an article on the stream website, which goes into more detail about CoreKit. This is for UIKit app. But the concept is the same for SwiftUI, so you can check this article to learn more about CoreKit on iOS. Let's go to Xcode and do the implementation. Since the app requires the use of audio and video, the first thing you need to do is to select the main app folder and go to the info tab. We need to set privacy for camera and microphone. So you can see here, I have added these two keys. The first one is privacy for camera. Then the next is the privacy for microphone. So these are the two privacy configurations we need to set for the app. Let's do the implementation in the file incomingcall.swift. In this file, you can see I have already imported call kit. SwiftUI does not support call kit by default. So over here, you can see I have created a class incomingcallViewController that conforms to UIViewController and CS provider delegate. The provider delegate consists of a collection of methods you can implement for VoIP calls. For example, it has a method for displaying when a call started. In our view did load, I have added this track for presenting the incoming call view and another function for updating the incoming call view. Then over here, we use report new incoming call for reporting a new incoming call with a specified UUID and a call state. We will add this later in the actual implementation. And over here, we do a basic error checking. To do the actual implementation, we need to follow only these four steps. First, we create an object to control the UI of the incoming call. That includes a localized name and a ringtone to play. So we can use this object to also customize the ringtone we want to play. The same object can also be used to customize the caller's avatar. I will show you how to customize that in another video. So the main function of the CS provider configuration object is to control the UI of incoming calls. Next, we need to create another object for reporting notifications. We will call this call provider. That is an instance of the CS provider object. The CX provider object is responsible for reporting notifications that occur within the system. You can see we have an error here because we need to initialize it with our call controller. 
So let's add a parameter configuration and paste the call controller. Next, we need to create a provider delegate and specify an optional queue for performing delegate methods. You can see here, the value is set to nil. That means all the methods are performed on the main queue. Lastly, we need another object to watch the call for changes. Let's call it call watchman. That should be an instance of the CX call update. The CX call update object allows the system to watch the call for changes over time. For example, it reports about when the call is started. It also reports about an ongoing call and other changes to call, such as switching from audio to video call. So using the call update object, we can specify information about the caller. For example, let's specify the call type. For the call type, we can say we want an email address. We can make it generic. We can specify it as phone number. Let's use that for now and set the value to any string. Also, we can use it to specify whether the call has video or not. It has so many properties. So by putting a period, we can see it has all these other functions we can implement. But in this video, we will just leave it here. So this is all we need to do to implement the incoming call screen for the app. Let's run it again to see what we have. So you can see the incoming call screen is displaying the number we entered here. We can also use the instance of the object we defined here to override this number. That can be done by using the localized caller name. So let's add it here. So here we can put any name and then run the app again. So now you can see our incoming call has overwritten the number we entered here with the localized name. That is all we have in this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to present an outgoing call. Then in the third video, we'll focus on customizing the incoming call experience, such as customizing the caller's avatar and using a custom ringtone. Thanks for watching this video.